Hi y'all, this is El Placazo coming to you from the West Side. Today, I'm your host, Sofia Otero. And like most of you, I love bread. Particularly pan dulce. In this episode, we're going to be talking about a particular type of bread, pan de muerto. A seasonal pan dulce made especially for Dia de Muertos, which is a holiday celebrated November 1st and 2nd throughout communities across the Western Hemisphere, including, as I'm sure many of you already know, San Antonio. Dia de Muertos is a super unique holiday in that it has its roots in both pre-Columbian and Christian practices. In fact, Italy has its own version of pan de muerto, called, respectively, pan de muerti. Despite this similarity, the holiday Dia de Muertos and its vibrancy is unique to Latin American communities across the Western Hemisphere. However, we wanted to know more about Pan de Muerto. And so our very own Laura Leon and Cuatli Reina paid a visit to a local family-owned bakery, La Esmeralda. Hi, this is Laura Leon of El Placaso newspaper. We're here today at La Esmeralda Bakery. We're at 739 New Laredo Highway. And well, my name is Jorge Vasquez, and uh, I'm co-owner of the bakery with my father. Uh, my dad worked for a company for, he worked for companies like first Albertsons and then H-E-B for like almost, almost 25 years, 30 years, like as a baker, like in, in, in the baking department. But, uh, and then my mom would, uh, she would work at the Superior, like as, you know, like selling bread, like just up front. And like I was raised in there, like their stories were saying like I would go, like they would call me Tremendin for being like Tremendo, which is tremendous. And so like I would just, uh, and I would go and I would poke holes in all the bread at the thing. And so like that's, you know, and they, they would uh, they would take care of me and you know, whenever we had to work or, or I just, I don't remember much of it, but I do remember getting picked up from there. And you know, they, uh, they are like family and, and yeah, there's the connection goes years back for sure. Of course, we also talked to the other co-owner of the bakery, Jorge Sr., who has been working in this building for 17 years. One of the first things that we noticed was the large altar right next to him. Estamos aquí en en la panadería la la Esmeralda, este es parte de de parte de de El Placazo eh, de San Anto Cultural Arts. Este queríamos platicar un poquito con con usted, señor, este, ¿cómo se llama? Jorge. Jorge. Uh, este, y, es, y es el dueño de aquí de, de la panadería. Sí, el dueño de la panadería. Aquí, aquí a su lado tenemos su, su altar, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. este, en, y, y, quién, ¿Y quién es que, que teníamos aquí en, en, en su altar? Este, las, fotos de... Las fotografías son de algunos familiares y conocidos. Cada año. Cada año procuramos poner un altar. Entonces, los, los, la familia son, son familiares los de las fotos y conocidos y lo que se celebra en esto es, es por el día de los muertos cada día, noviembre 2, ¿verdad? Throughout time, Día de Muertos and its traditions and significance has evolved to mean many different things to many different people. We asked Jorge and Jorge Jr. about their own ideas about Día de Muertos and also Pan de Muerto. For us here, uh, we hold on a lot to hope, you know, um, having a lot of uh, esperanza is something that, that we look forward to and, and, and it's what keeps us going, you know, and this is, a, it is, a, you know, just just because uh, we're, we're recognizing those that have passed away, you know, it's the complete opposite, like we're celebrating life, you know, so that that's the, the memories of them and, and, you know, anything that, that uh, Anything that, that could be looked at in a, in a negative standpoint is going to become just that, you know. But it's, it's a lot of positivity that comes from it, you know, and it's a lot of love. I know it's a lot of tradition with the Mexican bread and um, every aspect of that nature. But if you're asking me what's the most, the thing that I love the most, it would be that, being able to work with my family every day. I can't tell you much about, you know, what the whole significance of the bones on the bread is. You know, what I can tell you is the joy that we see the people that get it and, you know, the customers that keep coming back, you know, and they keep, you know, they order it by the dozens, you know. So from that aspect, I know that it does bring a lot of joy. For Jorge Jr., Pan de Muerto and its significance appears to be centered on the relationship between the bakery and the customers. 
When we asked him about Pan de Muerto and its significance, he talked about the joy that it brings to customers. And I think that really highlights the power that Pan de Muerto and all these different traditions can have in bringing people together. And as a bakery, they're a reflection of the surrounding community, something that La Esmeralda knows very well. So I know for the for the Hispanic culture, it's been a uh, it's been something that it, it holds dearly to the people that do celebrate, right? Because um, I know that it's uh, it's something to hold to to the people that have passed, and and I know that there's a lot of um, compassion and a lot of and, and just a lot of love for the people that do celebrate it, and and the fact that we're able to accommodate them by making this bread that has been passed down for I mean decades you know and it's 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 very it's awesome I know it I know it's um if if it's something that you know like that saying like if you like it I love it right and the fact that people love to celebrate this and they love to do it and and the fact that we could be a part of it that's it's it's pretty cool we also asked Jorge senior about his motives for making pan de muerto and his response was more focused on tradition and honoring his past it's, it's, it's not a festividad, it's, it's como una ofrenda. Ah, okay. Okay, en, en realidad, esto lo hago porque viene de antepasados de, de, de México. Yo no soy muy creyente de, de toda Ajá. Esta, esta cultura. Ajá, sí. pero más es como para observar la cultura de, para observar la cultura de, de aquí. Ajá. Obviously, we also had to ask for the recipe for their pan de muerto. Well, that's secret, man. I tell you that I'm at this. <laughs> but yeah, okay, that's it, it good. Could, yeah, it could taste, uh, you know, uh, actually a lot of the bread here is made with like about, I want to say five bases of, of the of the things, but they're made different, you know. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, I don't want to stab you on camera. So. Okay. <laughs> However, if you're not much of a baker, or even if you are, please pay a visit to La Esmeralda. And not just for the seasonal pan de muerto, but also for the wide variety of pastries that they have all year round. Thank you for listening and giving your support to San Anto Cultural Arts. If you'd like to donate to San Anto Cultural Arts, you can always go to our webpage, sananto.org. Go to the home button and scroll right on down to the donate page where you can donate now or make a monthly donation to help support our programming and help provide snacks and school supplies and art supplies for kids attending San Anto's programming. We'd like to thank the City of San Antonio Department of Arts and Culture, the HEB Butt Foundation, Impact San Antonio, the Quincasi Charitable Fund, San Antonio Area Foundation, Russell Hill Rogers Fund for the Arts, Fair County, Alice Kleberg Reynolds Foundation, and the Allstate Foundation. <laughs> Y en alto, porque ella sabe que...